could see all of London. I could see Tower Bridge. I could see um, Battersea Power Station, Alexandra Palace, the post office tower. I could see part of the Thames. It was a beautiful view. I miss when it snowed. You could see the snow coming down and you, know, and you could see the whole of London covered in white. And amazingly enough, like if it was foggy, it was an eerie thing because you stand on the balcony and you can't see the sky and you can't see the floor. It's just like looking into a void. And you think, wow, that's just like spooky. And you can see all the little diamonds in the fog. It's something that will stick with me forever. Balfron Tower was designed by Erno Goldfinger in 1963 to provide local residents with a decent standard of council housing. Most of the families who moved into the building came from the adjoining streets, a result of Goldfinger's wish for existing communities to be preserved in the tower. In 1996, Balfron Tower was given Grade 2 listed status to protect it from demolition. Yet while the building itself has been preserved, its original purpose, to provide homes for the local working class community, has since been lost. I moved into Balfour in 1997 after spending a year in a hostel in Whitechapel and I was so happy to get my own flat after being homeless for like the last two years. It was a big deal for me. It was my own front door and my own independence and I loved it. As the years went by I started decorating it, tiled the kitchen, uh, put all new wall units in there and stuff like that and carpeted it. It was my home. And I thought I was going to spend the rest of my days there. In 2006, residents were asked to vote on whether ownership and management of their homes would be transferred from Tower Hamlets Council to Housing Association Poplar Harker. The lack of council investment in the maintenance and refurbishment of the building helped steer the vote in favour of the transfer. Balfour Tower became the property of Poplar Harker in 2007. Obviously, you talk to people, you know, you meet people in the lift, and it was a topic of conversation, right? You're going to vote for the council, you're going to vote for Harker. And I never met anyone that voted for Harker. Residents felt lied to and betrayed, essentially, because they entrusted their homes on the back of that vote to refurbish them. And now they're saying they couldn't, and they're being kicked out. And they said that was only temporary. They said, we need to move you out because there's building works going on. And to begin with, we thought we was all going to move back in here again. But then we realised that wasn't the case. Right, that's it. We are getting moved out for good. Doors closing. Going down. Right now, brutalist architecture is extremely fashionable. Balfour Tower is quite unique in the fact that it's being refurbished, not demolished. And that's being refurbished because it is a grade two star listed building. It's been neglected. It needs work done to it, there's absolutely no doubt. It's what's called managed decline. You run something down, you run it into the ground. They did every tactic in the book they could to get rid of people. They began moving in artists and property guardians who pay no rent to Harker. So they began losing money straight away, a loss of rent. And there's many voided properties there as well. So they're set empty. Harker saying they can't afford refurbishment. They said it will cost 20 million pounds to refurbish. I think that Poplar Harker used the Arts Trust and the artists to create out of Balfour Tower a massive for sale sign for the area of Poplar. I haven't got a, a complete um, understanding what happened, but basically the government changed all the rules and the original plan for Balfour had to be scrapped. That was a direct result of the way that the government changed the funding rules and the financing of social housing and housing associations in general. If money's the issue, why are they prepared to lose millions on rent? They've possibly missed out on a £2 million grant from the government. They're paying leaseholders up to £1,500 a month since January 2014 to keep their properties empty. And they were given money at stock transfer to refurbish the building, millions. So I've calculated roughly they must have at least £10 million provided to them from various sources, or that they've lost from income towards refurbishing Balfour. And that means they need to find £10 million to refurbish it. 
most of the developments which have gone up in my constituency over the past 20 years have been partnerships between the council and developers or between housing associations and developers. So those partnerships have been working reasonably well in our hands. I would say it's a lie that they couldn't afford to refurbish Alphon and allow social tenants to live there. Steve Stride, the uh, chief executive of Fabian Harker, is on record as saying he wants Poplar to be the new Shoreditch. And we know what's happening to that. It's aimed at young people with money, the tech sector, etc. So this seems to be his overall goal to kind of gentrify Poplar Harker, attract investment, and drive up prices. And essentially, that will push people out. I think the fact that there was very little opposition to what happened at Balfour Tower is because the community bonds have been broken in this country, not just by the Tories, but by new Labour. Labour have sold huge numbers of council houses and transferred even bigger numbers of council houses to social housing providers like Poplar Harker, who effectively have gone on to sell them on. Goldfinger was a Hungarian emigrant. He was a Marxist socialist. He was building housing for working class people. So there's lots of people saying Goldfinger will be spinning in his grave. It's much of a cliche, but who knows what he'd say because unfortunately times have changed. We have now created an entire generation through schooling and education where people buy into the whole neoliberal idea of what is there for the poor can be taken and given to the rich. Every time I walk past it, I always look up at my flat, my ex-flat, and see if there's a light on, see if there's someone in there. And a few times I felt like knocking on the door and just seeing who is. You know. But I can't, you know, it's not their fault, I can't upset them. It's heartbreaking, you know. After all that work I'd done, I got it just how I liked it. And then they say, you're right, pack up and clear out. And it broke my heart. I wish I was still in Balfour, I missed the place.